Hey guys, so I was selected by Element 14 to road test one, uh, one of the products they sell, which is I'll be testing the Beagle Bone Black Industrial. So they sent me this and I was going to basically look into a review a little bit and give my honest opinion on, you know, I was not paid to do this or anything. I was just given this and they said test it out and I get to keep it. So I thought right now we can start by just unboxing it real quick and let's just see what they sent me with it because this will be my first time actually opening it up. So looking at it right now, so right now I have the Beagle Bone Black in here and it's anti-static discharge. Um, wrapping and that looks to be all that yeah that's all that's in this box so they gave me the beagle bone black and the usb drive so let's just open this up really quickly so i've been looking into these real quick so what i know from these is one is that they use the TI Cortex A8 1 gigahertz single core processor and one thing I really like about these that really caught my eyes that it comes with uh, 4 gigabytes of storage on here with Debian Linux installed already which was a pretty nice thing for me so they have two uh, 46 pin headers and I think overall total they have 65 GPIO pins that could be used for all sorts of things. It has Ethernet port, a 5 volt and a USB host control and HDMI with a micro SD card. So what so so for right now I guess we'll hook it up to the computer and follow their step-by-step -step guide on installing or basically getting this to run because I've never run, used this before this is my first time ever using a Beagle Bone Black and we'll run some test code on and see how the architecture of this all works and how we can get everything working so before I look at the computer you know I know these are supposed to be thermally pretty good it's supposed to run pretty cool by itself but I'm just gonna add a little um, aluminum block to it just to keep the CPU a little bit cooler. It's just a little aluminum heat sink. I believe this is off like a Nintendo 64. It has a thermal pad on there also. So I'm just going to add it on. And okay. so I mean that's stuck on there good. So right now we're going to go to the computer and follow the Beagle Bones step-by-step -step guide on getting this set up. Then we'll run some code on and see how it works. So we're going to get started by going to Beagle Board dot org and following their get started guide to getting started with the beagle bone so it's going to first have us by downloading the two drivers i'm just putting these on my desktop right now so reading through step by step guide for number two it just says basically install these i try to run since they're not through the app store i got to give each one permission so i'm just doing that right now and i believe this is, should be it this is all the software you need to download and after that, I believe we're going to be using their Cloud9 uh, software development, their IDE, their development environment for it. And I believe it's Python based, so that should be relatively straightforward. So I'll just get it download, uh, installing the second driver. Let's go password in. This is all cool stuff here. Nice. So I did like this, how simple it was to get basically started with it. So the second driver is finishing it up and so I'm going to restart the computer really quick. Now I just restarted my computer and I'm back to the BeagleBoard website. So we just completed step two. Now step three is going to have us go to this link. I'm just going to open up a new tab and this link with the drivers we installed is directly going to connect to our our beagle bone board as you can see I got the green box there that's saying it's connected that's all good now here it's all saying you know maybe it's time for us to update the board I'm not going to do that because I should rel relatively have the newer uh, version of Debian on there so right now they have example code running since this is going to be cloud based you can just run the code right now and on my I'm clicking run it's actually switching the four blue LEDs on 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 my board which is pretty cool but now I'm going to open up the Cloud9 IDE development software so it's just loading it right now now it's basically this is my first time it's just showing me all options here I'm just seeing what the, this is basically the command window here 
and I'll open up a new terminal here. So I have the Cloud9 IDE development software open and I have the pinouts of the BeagleBone. So to so looking at the BeagleBone we have two headers and the right header is labeled PA and the right and the left header is labeled P9. And each both of those headers have two columns. The left column is the odd numbered pins and the right column is the even numbered pins. So I was just thinking we could begin by writing a small program that just blinks this external LED. So we're going to first begin by labeling a variable. We're going to label it just say variable B and we're going to have to use the required bone script that this is just like how in say in Arduino you would always import stuff. This is just like that here. Then we're going to Basically, I was thinking maybe we'll, we'll label variable for the LED, and this is how we label here. We're going to label P8, so it's going to use the right header, underscore, and 10, so it's going to use digital pin 10. So then we're going to have to also put the state for the LED, and I'm just going to label this state, and we're going to begin by zero, making it lower off. So then on the BeagleBone, every GBIO pin is automatically set as an input to read stuff. So right here, we're just going to go B.pin mode, LED, and define it as an output so it turns on the LED. So now we're going to create the function that's actually going to be toggling the LED on and off. So we're just going to just label it just toggle LED because that's what it's going to do. So here's where we're going to have it switch state. So we're going to just have state, question mark, zero, zero. And it's going to, this is where it's going to toggle between zero and one, or on and off, or zero for off, one for on. And we're going to write this, uh, digitally write it to the LED and label and write it, like write the state to the LED. So it's going to switch the LED on and off. We're going to just end this function real quick. We're going to close this and end the function. So then we also have to set a timer for it just so it knows how long. So we're going to just use the built-in timer function and we're going to set the interval. So we're going to toggle the LED which is going to call the function toggle LED and we're going to set it to 200 milliseconds. Now we're going to have to set the same function to stop or set a stop timer to stop the function. So basically that we're going to use a built-in clear interval and it's going to clear the timer back to zero. So it's just going to basically keep climbing to 200 then I'll go to this function and clear it back to zero. I'll keep repeating this process. So here this is just going to infinitely run. Right now we could just run it and it's going to keep running forever or we can add a little bit of code at the end to set timeout which is going to basically count up to a certain amount of time then just stop running so right now we're just going to set it to 10,000 milliseconds so it should run the code for about 10 seconds and it should time out so right now I just saved it and I'm going to hit run and export this to the BeagleBone let's see if it actually works so right now the code's being uploaded to the Beagle board and now it started blinking. So it should blink for roughly 10 seconds. And then once it stops, we'll know that it works and program correctly. Awesome, so it did work. So right now I programmed a little program that uses one of the GPIO pins to output a PWM signal or pulse with modulation signal to run this little rumble motor. So right now this rumble motor is spinning at about 100 times a second and this is a rumble motor on iPhone 5S. It's the same iPhone that I used the shell of it to build a little a little Arduino Uno Flappy Bird game console. It was all programmed in the, the AT Mega 328 microcontroller. I actually drove that the little uh, SPI TFT screen but so right now it's doing a pretty good job of controlling this little motor and I think I have a really good idea what I'm going to use this for 
this beagle board for? So I had a chance to get used to and program a little bit on the beagle bone, and you know, and I feel like I'm I can confidently give an honest review on and what I feel I like about it and what I feel like could be a little bit better on it. I don't know. But to begin with, let's talk about the stuff I like on it. You know, first of all, for me being a first time user of BeagleBone, their support, or I guess their get started guide was extremely helpful. It was also that this comes with four gigabytes of onboard storage and it has Debian Linux installed on it. it was, to me, like a huge, I guess, deal maker, because you know, it was so painless for me getting set up. You know, when I first got the Raspberry Pi for the first time and I was trying to install RetroPie on it, I was pretty confusing, you know, what I had to get for it. And, like, you know, I used Mac to, like, in my little workspace. So it was really difficult to, like, get all the right stuff to format the SD card and burn the image to it. And this is all being there, all I had to do was download two drivers and that was basically set up and that was really nice for me, you know, it's going to make it a lot easier, more user friendly to the, to the novice, to the people who are novice to the BeagleBone. Another thing I really liked was it's Cloud9, cloud based IDE development software, you know, that was, it was basically really painless to use and I like how as soon as you plug it in and you open up to the website, it's just connected in there. You know, you don't have to download any more software to it. So another thing I like on it, basically it's all the GPI ports. You know, that's going to give you a lot of control over what you want to make of it. For me, a future project I could definitely see with this is maybe, a, you know, a little drone. Because it has so much GPI ports, it's so nice and it's so simple to interact with it because, you know, based around Python. I do have Python experience. I program my genetic algorithms with Python. But I do like a little bit but more than C because it's just that much easier to program with. And now that we have the processors and everything we need we have, even on these single board computers, you know, we don't need to program those lower level languages like C because we have the processing power, you know, we have the onboard memory, so we can use higher languages. And I feel like it would be better for the new new user of the Beagle board that it's in Python, you know, it won't be so confusing to learn as C where Python's designed for the new programmer. The other thing I like for it is it has this one USB port, you know, that's what basically all you ever need to do if you're not gonna use the GPI. If I was to make this say into like a little portable gaming console, all I'm really gonna need is one port. I don't I like that. They use some of the the real estate of the board for other stuff instead of just putting so many USB ports on there. The Ethernet port, I could go without it. When I make something of this, I'm gonna just desolder this. I like I like the you know I really do like the blue LEDs of. I think that's a nicer look than just standard red. You know, um, you know basically it has a micro uh, micro SD slot. Yet again, I like more that has the onboard storage. The mini HDMI port, I really wish it was more full size because it's just more friendly, you know, it's less stuff you have to buy off the shelves to get it to work. The mini USB, you know, I do like that a little bit more than micro USB. Now, I really want to talk about my favorite part of this is all the GPIO headers. You know, everything's so clearly defined and the way it's been developed the software, the Debian Linux for this has been developed. It's really nice, you know, one thing I like on the GPI ports is how you have all your uh, LCD controller outputs, you know, your horizontal sync, your vertical sync of the LCD, it's all in there, and I do like that aspect of it. I do like that you have so many GPIO ports because you can develop something really nicely from it, which is why I was thinking maybe a future project with this would be to build a little quadricopter drone and see what we can do with it. But I guess one thing I really felt weird about when I first got this is they put this shiny coat on. It's basically like a thermal protective, like water resistant stuff. But they did just such a poor job of it. You know, it's only like in one blotchy area and it, it just doesn't look that professional to me. You know, it should have been even coat across the whole thing. Just so it's just that extra step. I know in manufacturing that's an extra cost. and with these single board computers or system on a chip computer boards, 
they really want to just drive down the cost so they can make it so user friendly but I, I just feel like that's one of those steps that like I don't, I don't like that it doesn't look too professional but overall I had a really good first time experience with the Beagle Bone board I definitely I'm going to consider this for more of my future projects. I really do like a lot of this stuff. And I, like I said, one of my favorites is the onboard memory, a lot of GPIO ports. It's really good things with it. And their cloud based IDE like, uh, development software is really nicely and it was really user friendly for the first time user of this. So I hope you guys like this little review on the BeagleBoard. Beagleboard video please subscribe maybe you'll see this on as a quadrocopter in a future episode thank you so much